Okay. <laughs> test, test. Yeah, okay, good. Hello again from Maker Fair. This is Joel at the Matter Hackers booth, and with me today is punished props extraordinaire, Bill Duran. Bill, how you doing? Hello there. I'm having a great time. This is my first time at Maker Fair. This is my first time at Maker Fair too. This That's is, crazy. It's like a. It's like a, I like to say it's Comic Con invaded by Burning Man. That's see. That's pretty good. It's pretty accurate. A lot less cosplay. A lot less cosplay, especially what you're used to being a prop builder yourself. Yeah, there are. Not to say there aren't any costumes. There are some really out there costumes. Most of them with fire, moving parts, <laughs> robots. Uh, just less of them than what I'm used to. So let's. Let's play on that a little bit. You do prop work, you build foam smith, obviously, and you build costumes. Are you going to incorporate more 3D printed elements or more, more action elements like what you've seen here? Oh, yes. So a lot of the stuff that we do, uh, I've done lately, I got my very first 3D printer. Congrats. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, and I, I need a dozen more, especially like all the ones I've seen around here today. I'm like, oh, I need one of those, I need one of those, I need two of those. Uh, the one over there that's like 18 feet tall. You should get that one. Yeah, I can make a whole Iron Man suit all in one shot. Just, um, that's coming to my house next week. Yeah? The, the giant one? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, it's a good thing that Joel lives 20 minutes away from me, because I'll be stopping by. <laughs> um, so I'm totally hooked on the 3D printing thing, both for doing full prop pieces, like I did Ray's Blaster from Star Wars, all 3D printed, uh, but also incorporated 3D printing elements into other like costume parts. So I may make a, a whole piece of armor out of foam to bulk out the size, but then if it's got little greeblies or detail uh, pieces or repeated pieces, I could 3D print those pieces. Um, if I need a lot of them, I could take uh, make a silicone mold of that piece, cast a whole bunch of copies of it. I mean, the, the, the options are endless. Well, what's a greebly? A greebly. So if you look at the, uh, the side, imagine in your, in your, your head, paint you a word picture, Star Destroyer. Okay. okay. The side of the Star Destroyer, all the deep textures and bits and bobs on the side of the Star Destroyer. Yes. Those are Greeley's. It's a oh. Highly technical term <laughs> to describe little bits and pieces that are glued to the side of a model to make it look more interesting. That's that's literally the term Greeley. Yeah. And gre or Greebles and Nernies. And Nernies. Yeah. <laughs> If there's a Wikipedia entry, link, oh, link to it. Go okay. look it up. Yeah, I will, I will, <laughs> I will look this up. I got it because that's that's fantastic. Um, I, you mentioned casting parts as well. So, with 3D printing, then kind of explain that process really quickly. Is it you print you you make something, you prepare it, and then mold it? Is that it? Yeah. So I'll make a, a piece out of a, a 3D printed part. Usually, um, I do PLA because that's the, the machine I have does that. And then I'll do some finishing work on that. In fact, we'll be playing with at some of that when I get to visit your place. Absolutely. Lots of sanding to finish the surface texture, get it really nice. Uh, and then I'll dump silicone on it. It'll cure to a rubber. And that makes a negative copy of our piece. And then we can pour anything in there to make a copy of it. I usually use urethane plastic. You could put wax in there. You could put ice in there. You could put chocolate if you wanted to. Uh, if you have food safe silicone, <laughs> it's very important. Uh, but you could make uh, additional copies of that part much quicker than 3D printing them constantly. Because uh, with a urethane plastic, a piece will cure in about 10 minutes. So you can knock a new piece out every 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, oh but the, the 3D printing is very handy because it creates this complex part that you then can replicate easily using another method. And with the 3D printing um, on Ray's Blaster, I did a lot of uh, prototyping. So I would build a piece, uh, I would see how it looked, um, modify the model a little bit, scale it appropriately. I could iterate on the design very quickly with a 3D printer to get the final product that, I, that I'm exactly like the way I want it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I have, I have one last question, and I don't even know if this is possible, but uh, for Ray's Blaster, is it food safe silicone? Because I would love a chocolate Ray's Blaster. Unfortunately, it is not. No. Man. Sorry. But it's possible. It's possible, yes. I mean, I'm not going to stop you, <laughs> but I wouldn't need it. Just saying. All right. Hey, Bill, thanks for stopping by the booth. And I'm uh, looking forward to working with you. And let's seal it with a high five. What do you say? <laughs>